High School DxD Volume 14, if I could describe it in a simple word, I would say it's the calm before the storm. And I feel like that is very much the case with this volume because it really sets up the stage for some new characters and some new plot points that are going to be opening up probably in Volume 15. And I've definitely got to say, it really looks like it's opening up a lot of avenues, a lot of story hooks, especially about the vampires, the wizards slash magicians, the Chaos Brigade, the heroes that are, you know, really, you know, causing a controversy, a storm, and just making Issei and Rias Grimmery's life absolute miserable. But the, the thing that really got me interested in this volume was the vampires and, of course, the wizards slash magicians, and I felt like that is something that I've been really excited about and really interested in seeing more of. So I was a little bit disappointed that it didn't go too much into the vampires because I was really looking forward to it. But right at the end of this volume, it shows that something is obviously going to happen. Something is going to unfold with the vampires and learning more about some of these new characters. The one thing I just I love about High School DxD, it's raunchy, it's full of fan service, but there is so much world building. I feel like I say this in every single video for every single volume, but I can't emphasize enough just how much world building that goes into this and how much establishing the lore, you know, the characters and just connecting everything together bit by bit especially for the vampires and the magicians i just feel like there's so much intertwining in this world and you've got the norse mythology you know there's just so much ancient history in the real world that we know of that has been intertwined in this and it follows the lore and the you know the back history of norse mythology greeks egyptians vampires etc and that's what i really commend this author for they've put a lot of attention to detail for such a raunchy series I feel like I repeat myself every time, but nonetheless, I just love the amount of world building that goes into this. And this seems to be establishing a lot more of the open worldness behind it and really showing how many different clans and groups and even, you know, they can show the vampires themselves and just say, hey, we have a race here called the vampires, but there's a lot of different clans and groups sort of infighting amongst themselves. And that is something that really is shown in volume 14 is that the vampires aren't all getting along and there are different types of prestige you know pure vampires unpure you know half and half and how they treat each other as well treating you know pures and how they look down on other races and then the half and the half how some will just exile them and some will just use them for their own benefits so I really thought that was a really interesting hook and seeing this new vampire chick that's been introduced, seeing some of the art for it is definitely, you know, definitely going to be fun to see more of her. She's very lolly-like and that is something, of course, that the author really emphasizes on with characters, but still nonetheless, the world building is just amazing. But with the incident that goes on with the vampires, they're trying to sort of Armstrong Rias into handing Gaspar over and it's not even sure what's going to happen to Gaspar. If Rias was to agree to this, which she's been Armstronged into, you know, basically saying, well, if you want an alliance, you've got to hand Gaspar over so we can use him for our own benefits and not even guaranteeing to hand Gaspar over, this really just puts a real tedious sort of strain on Rias and forces her to have to do stuff that she may not be comfortable with. And that's what I really find interesting about this volume is how is she going to sort of deal with this situation as it unfolds, seeing her leadership skills unfold and grow and seeing how the gang you know has to deal with Rias going off to you know Romania to you know interact with these vampires negotiate and try and do as best as she can on her own while Issa and the gang are working with you know Rias's high school childhood friend and them dealing with the magicians and them assaulting and you know beating Gaspar up this volume has so much potential to unfold it you know has like three to five different areas and doors that it can open with the magicians going on the vampires and of course the chaos brigade we we do hear a bit more about what's going on with them and volley I've always found volley interesting because he's a character you kind of hate but you grow to like and respect. And that's kind of how Issei and Volley sort of get along. They respect each other, but there's a little bit of a difference in how they see the world and how they want to approach the world. But I still like him as a character because I find what's the most interesting about characters, especially in light novel and anime series, is seeing a hero, but not a hero. Someone that fights for, you know, the right reasons, but has a different a way of approaching it. You can fight for good and just do good and save everyone, but then there's other people that kind of Go about being a hero in a less, I would say, honourable way and doing what's necessary and less of what people want. I, I like Volley for that. I think he's interesting. He's got a lot of interesting hooks. So seeing a little bit of him, not that much in this volume, was still 
a little bit of a treat, and I look forward to seeing more of him in the later volumes. But I think the most interesting part about this volume was sort of the end scene, of course, you know, generally at the end of these volumes we get a bit of a fight scene, we get to see some action, we get to see Issei, you know, try to be the big hero, and seeing the big fight that unfolded with the new, you know, dragon, and finding out that some of these individuals that are fought that have been dead are actually alive, like Grafia's brother being the traitor, I thought that was really interesting because it not just shows that, you know, these dragons and entities and powerful figures that have believed to be dead are now popping up, it makes you question why and why they're all intertwined and how they've all been involved together and obviously there is some bigger, grander villain playing a bigger role here or something of larger plans have been unfolded by some powerful group, individual, etc. I'm interested to see how that unfolds and how Gravefear deals with this. I've got some ideas of how this is going to unfold but for me I just, I like seeing not just, you know, characters that we sometimes see, like Gravefear we see a little bit of and she's a character that I find quite interesting for a lot of plot reasons. But what is also interesting is seeing these other side characters and how their families are interacting. You know, Grafia having a brother now, knowing about that brother, believing them to be dead, and then finding out that they're actually alive and a traitor. It just shows how many interesting and different characters there are in the story and how the light novel series can really focus on different amount of characters without oversaturating it to the point where you just you end up hearing about one character and never hearing about them for 10 volumes and even then I don't mind how High School DxD has some characters they come in for a couple of volumes and then you don't see them for a while but seeing them unfold and get their moment to shine in little bits and pieces that's what I like seeing and we get to find out more about the dragons as well of course with this new dragon that's appeared that's you know showing themselves to be a quite of an adversary for Issei I'm interested to see how that unfolds because obviously Grafia's brother is going to be a big hindrance on the gang and there's obviously you know that him being the traitor some stuff is definitely going to go wrong and they're gonna have to deal with it. and how Rias deals with not just the vampire issues the magicians all these different powerful groups trying to interfere, how they sort of micromanage and deal with so many problems, that's what I like, because it shows that Rhea's has got strong leadership skills, and she's growing in those leadership skills as well, so there's always that constant growing, especially power, that's something that happens every volume, they get new abilities, powers, and stronger, but also seeing not just their character development, the world building, but also their skills as leaders and as people and as friends are constantly evolving and growing. And so it doesn't just focus on the sort of showman aspect of just power and building more characters and villains, but it also establishes other skills that aren't just power orientated. People skills, leadership skills, you know, social skills in the politics of how the devil society works, but also other societies as well, humans, angels, you know, half angels, etc. There is definitely a lot of powerful and different groups out there that they've got to interact with. So seeing that all evolve is always a treat. Another quick thing that I did also almost forget talking about that I thought was really interesting was seeing how the Phoenix family and Riser and all that are dealing with these tears as well. These tears that are being sort of artificially created through these alternative methods without spoiling too much but that was really interesting because it shows there's like a black market going on the magicians are part of it there's all these powerful dark entities working in the back ends to sort of manipulate the devils and these other races that are trying to do right and allied together but there's obviously these traders and powerful individuals hiding amongst these groups manipulating and doing some pretty horrific things and seeing how this family is going to deal with that and of course you know the lovely girl that we all know and love that is really sort of flourished and grown in these volumes and really showing an interesting impact on Issei's life while managing his life I feel like she's definitely got a lot of baggage to deal with you know she's really got to deal with a lot of stuff like trying to manage Issei's life that romance that's building dealing with her brother dealing with the family issues and the politics that go on in the devil society, but now also dealing with, you know, all these powerful evil entities that are trying to manipulate and use her family, her bloodline, and her in particular to gain these powerful Phoenix Tears, because these Phoenix Tears are very powerful in a combat standpoint. You know, they're used in raiding games and a little bit more moderation due to rules, but in, you know, combat, this can really put a hindrance on Issei, especially seeing as he's kind of a bit armstrong in his power, because, you know, Drake has kind of gone into sleep mode, this is definitely not a good situation because those Phoenix Tears are very powerful, so yeah, this could really put a lot of issues and it just keeps weighing on Rias and the gang and of course 
this particular girl that's got to deal with all these things going on. So I'm interested to see not just how, how Rias deals with it, how Issei deals with it, but how she also deals with it as well. Because you can really see the tension and the emotional baggage that she's got to deal with. But overall, I'm just really interested to see, I mean, it's obvious next volume is going to be about the magicians unfolding, you know, if Issei gets a contract, seeing more about the vampires. The vampires are the one thing I'm really interested to see because I've always loved vampire lore, like the real deep, dark, gritty lore, and this volume definitely shows that there's some interesting stuff going on in the politics. But also seeing the magicians and seeing how Issei picks that, what unfolds with that, and you know, we definitely get to see some interesting art with, you know, what he could be picking. And of course, you know, the riser group and that girl picking and helping Issei sort of manage his life. I'm always intrigued to see how they interact because there's obviously a bit of chemistry building there. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of this volume? Again, a little bit of spoilers are okay, but not too many. I'll be reading volume 15 very soon. Love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe for more anime content, and I will see you, beautiful nerds, in the next video.